Yo, what's going on guys, and welcome back to episode 86 of the New World Iron Man series. The last episode was a little bit all over the place. We did some PvP, some PvE, experimented with Fire Staffs pre-buff, but most importantly, towards the end of the episode, we ended on some mutated Starstone runs, and ended up finally landing... No, not that, where is it? Your inventory gets all jumbled around after you leave a dungeon, but we finally ended up landing this Stormbound Buckler of the Soldier with Vicious as the random third perk. This is the best in slot DPS shield in the game for ancient content. It took me, I think, three or four attempts, like weekly attempts to get this, so in total it's been two, two and a half months it took me to get this buckler because Starstone only comes on mutation once every few weeks and this is the fourth week I do believe of doing mutated Starstone trying to get this buckler. So we finally landed it, it's not that rare to begin with, I was just going very unlucky so I'm happy to have that done, although with the nerfs to thwarting strikes coming up because they're moving grit from strength to con, I'm gonna have to find a new DPS sword for ancient content, I was using this one which is really nice, I actually enjoy this sword quite a lot when I'm using it, I like the synergy between reverse stab and thwarting strikes because reverse stab does have grit and they also buff the weapon perk to deal more damage reverse stab deals 15 percent more damage sorry somebody walked into the room but probably a good thing because i'm sure i would have rambled for another minute if no one interrupted me but we're gonna be starting this episode off with a little bit more starstone we still have 18 more runs left for the week so we'll probably do this to start things off not sure where this episode is going to take us though i am just biding my time until season one update hits Actually, a bit random, but I think I'm about to roll an Ice Gauntlet. A few runs ago, I was running with a healer called Call Me Sohi, who was using a Life Staff and Ice Gauntlet combination, and it looked like a ton of fun. The idea of being just to help your team out with better clumps, you can put an Ice Shower on top of a Grav Well, or if you're running through a corridor, you can drop an Ice Shower and it'll clump up all the mobs as they're chasing you through. It just looked like a lot of fun. However, I don't have an Ice Gauntlet with Con or Focus on it. I have a ton with Intelligence and Deadly Frost, but we're going to have to craft our own with Constitution and Deadly Frost. We don't need a Golden Scarab to just guarantee the one perk, luckily. And we do have the Arcana Boost active in Windsward. And also, it was, it was see the last episode of the one before it we did farm the full concoctor set which is the arcana set so we have basically everything we need we don't have all three major trophies we only have two majors and one minor so we're going to be rolling 593 to 600 but it's okay all i need is a 590 gauntlet with a uh, deadly frost on it so actually let me go put the trophies up hold on God, the trophy system in this game is going to be the death of me. It is such a chore to keep up with it, but we just popped the Arcana food. I think we have everything we need. I know we need, yeah, six water quintessence. Ooh, maybe we don't have that much. Let me see. I know I have more water moat in my storage sheds, but let me see what this will get me. Oh, never mind. Looks like we're good to go. Okay. Dang, a 50% bonus chance on water quintessence? That never happens. That was actually pretty lucky. Now let me find golden scarab. Okay, I'm clearly missing something. What am I missing? Oh, I do need cloth. Okay, let me get some phoenix weave. Hold on. I'm not gonna lie. These recipes could do with a little bit of simplification. But let's scroll down to the constitution variant. Dexterity, intelligence, focus, and... Constitution, or Calcum Ice Gauntlet Constitution, there we go. The reason why I'm not making a Focus Ice Gauntlet is because I may want to use this Ice Gauntlet in a future melee setup, and Constitution works just fine as a healer. I usually run between 50 and 100 con when I'm healing, so it's not that big of a deal. Put on Deadly Frost, put on the Azoth, we're rolling 593 to 600, Deadly Frost and con. I did double check New World Database, there's no droppable Ice Gauntlet with Deadly Frost that doesn't have intelligence, so crafting it is our only option sadly. Let's see, did we land the 1 in 8 Legendary? Nah, I didn't think so, but ooh, Plagued Crits, that's actually kind of decent. Ice Shower can't crit, but who knows, it might come into use one day. So let me take this, I don't have the shards on me, let me pop open a few Mutator Caches. Alright, there we go, let's take this to 625 and... Maybe we'll heal a few dungeons, because Ice Shower looked like a ton of fun when that healer was using it. And funnily enough, my Ice Gauntlet's only level 13, so this is a great way for me to level it up passively. Oh, it looks like someone else is already running Ice Gauntlet, but oh well, I'm happy to contribute a little bit extra to the crowd control effects. It is really nice in here, you'll see it at a future point in the dungeon. Well, this is stupid. These, these skeletons don't hurt you, but it's a bug where they don't despawn when the boss dies, and it looks like I'm trapped. Let me see if I can... 
What about this? No? Well, there was the lobby in distress. It's a bronze run and they needed the DPS to fill in, so here I am. These are always my favorite opportunities because it's like half the work and you still get all the loot at the end of the expedition. And this is why I'm happy I crafted a constitutionized gauntlet because now I get to use this when I'm DPSing as well. They're at Simon, so I just have to make my way there. Saves me a lot of time. This is the best part of the dungeon to have an ice gauntlet on. Normally we skip all these mobs and this is where team wipes can happen. So put down an ice shower, they all get clumped up and slowed and your team can run through pretty safely. As long as they get to this checkpoint, everything is good. All that glitters is not gold, my friends. 51 minutes. I thought I was saving time by joining at Simon. It actually took longer to join this team starting from Simon than it would have just been to run a regular run. <laughs> Uh, you save like, what, 12, 13 minutes getting to Simon, or killing Simon, and then it's like a 33, 34 minute run, so yeah, this was actually longer than a regular run. This was a slow team. <laughs> oh, and to add insult to injury, we didn't get a single legendary weapon. We did get some legendary gear. Uh, not that great. Oh, nature protection, that's decent. I already think I, actually, I already have one of these. And Freedom Ancient Ward. That's not bad. I mean, these are really, really good tank shoes for ancient content, but the dex is a little questionable. But it looks like we've saved up some infused armor scraps, so let's go ahead and convert those into XP. We're just a hair off 21 aptitude on armoring. This might take us to 22. No, but so close. We are once again a hair off. We also have some jewelry scraps. I don't know what this will get us, but let's just find out. Ooh, nice. We got at least one aptitude crate there. Let's see. Yeah, four aptitude crates. Tier three crate, too. Looks nice. Come on, legendary pattern. Oh, now I get the pattern for armory clothing. Oh, this game has some nerve. This is my first pattern for the armoring set at rank. 20 what 21 or 22 armoring aptitude i had to get everything as a drop just because i couldn't land a single armoring clothing pattern well there's the first one let's check out the jewel crafting crate some water quintessence eh, underwhelming but a good amount of cooldown mats from that actually Not bad. Our first decent craft mod in a while. Although, I mean, oh, Sobek's Mighty Swipe. Wait, I think... Wait a second. This is... This isn't from the event. This is from the Greater Eternum drop table. Trench and Strikes and Enchanted, and I think... Hold on, that's actually kind of a decent great axe. I remember the third perk not being that great, but when they buff um, heavy attacks via the new 300 strength perk, this is going to be decent. Okay, Ruinous. That's why I don't remember it being that great. Oh, finally, we got a Greater Eternum weapon. We got the Curse Weaver Void Gauntlet instead of like a weapons or an armor cache. What is this? Tether and Jagged. I don't know if they're buffing Tether. It might be decent in the future, yeah? Oh, with luck on it. It's a luck Void Gauntlet. Look at that. Okay, that's decent. Didn't have that in my repertoire before. Let's crack open the Crassus Crate. Mad Scale. Another Animus, dude. This is like five days in a row. Oh no, we got that one pair of squirming vines to break up the Animus. But other than that, it's been nothing but these freaking Animuses. Animi? Animuses? Well, it has been about 35 days since I have last logged on to this game. Almost 40 days, actually. This is day one of the Fellowship and Fire update, season one of New World. It just went live this morning. And I got time to log on now, they finally managed to get me back onto this game. A lot's been going on. My girlfriend and I moved out of state. Uh, just ugh, too much stuff to catch up with you guys on right now. But also that, in combination with the lack of updates on this game, I'll be honest, I burnt out for a while. I did not even want to log on to this game to do my dailies or anything. But we'll try to get back into the swing of things. Hopefully I can get a regular upload schedule going. It all depends on how good this update is. Because I was really pushing to get those last few episodes out. I've had no real content to do. But I did respect my fire staff. The fire staff buff went live. They gave me all my points back. 
this is what I decided to go with. There's quite a few good perks on the Pyromancer tree, so we took four away from the Fire Mage tree, just the ones mostly dealing with mana, and um, yeah, put it into the Smolder Points on the right side. My friend and I are going to be jumping into that new dungeon, the new expedition, the human one, but it just really irks me how there, there's another Bane and another Ward, the human Ward. Like, why couldn't we just use beast ward and beast bane like that's been the dead perk for so long and now all this does is just add more gear sets for us to juggle it's honestly a very poorly optimized uh choice but it is what it is i don't actually have a single piece of human ward or bane we're just going into the expedition with basic gear anything with intelligence on it will work right oh well i just checked the season pass and apparently you get a reward just for logging in so we got the welcome gift let's see what's inside some Umber Shards, the Bone Weaver. I wonder if you just get a random named weapon. And a Gypsum Orb. Keen Speed and Mortal Energy. Ugh. Let's see. Jagged, Mortal Energy, and Keen Speed. I would have preferred nothing. Well, we made it to the Empyrean Forge. I gotta say, the sounds are nice. I played this on the PTR. This dungeon is absolutely wonderful visually, mechanically, everything. I do love this dungeon. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm being a bit harsh, but you guys have to understand, it feels like I've been slapped in the face nonstop by this game. We haven't had an update since October last year. And now here we are in April and things can finally start flowing again. So I'm hoping I have a really good time today. I'm going to get a beginner group together, just other random people on the server who want to learn this dungeon. I still don't fully understand the mechanics, but it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, dungeons on this game aren't known for being particularly difficult, so we'll see what we can do. Learning lobby. I mean, why would it be any higher? Uh, why the fuck would I be using this, Jimmy? Mine's level 20 and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I got this shit to level 20 on accident. I must have. There's no way. Because it had zero use before this update. Right. It's really nice now, though. It's really oh, nice. Yeah, you can you you can throw it. Like, do 20k damage right there. Right. Dang. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We we, oh, we, we, we moving. Behind you, you got fucking Fred Flintstone on you. <laughs> on me, that's what <laughs> he does. He's like Oonga Boonga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah dab a do head ass. He really did. That's uh, tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, cool. Not that much damage, actually. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm whooping ass. God damn, Meteor Shower is actually kind of fun to use now. I died. Uh oh. Healer died too. Oh shit, I got the Hunting Blade. That's the best, yeah. that's a human vein greatsword. That's best in slot. It has trenchant strikes, human vein, and keenly empowered, I think. It's like full vis. It's not best in no, slot. No, it's, it's best in slot. It is. Trenchant strikes? Is that the one that gives damage, or is that the one that heals you? No, that's the one that gives you damage on your heavy attacks. Okay, that actually is best. Yeah. Slot. You got, where'd you get it from? I don't know. The, the big dude with the sword that was way too big for him to carry. And they still didn't fix it, so I can't fucking salvage shit while my fucking inventory is full. Oh, I hate that. It's like, check if I have some scraps and then stack them like a fucking Lego, like a Lincoln log. Damn, check out these pants we got. Empyrean pants of the warden with refreshing torrent and lost ward. Con and dex on them too. These would have been so good pre-patch. I was really looking for some good refreshing torrent gear and had no luck, but now that they nerfed it, I don't know if it's still worth using. It can only proc every 0.2 seconds, so you can't get clump cooldowns like you used to, which is kind of sad. Dude, yes, hold on, let me get a clip. Oh, we got the Cleric's Walking Staff. This is Blessed Refreshing Move and Mending Protection. We got it on our first run. This was like a freaking 500k staff before the update, and now we just got it on our first run of the regular dungeon. That is so silly. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if... Orb of Protection is still meta because Fortify took a giant nerf, but the perk Mending Protection is still out of this world. We'll link that in the chat. I don't know how rare that is. Maybe we got lucky or maybe it's just not that rare. This is pretty garbage. We'll scrap that. What about anything else? Fire damage and refreshing. I'll look up that. That's garbage. The loot here seems to be good. Like I said, the dungeon is absolutely incredible. No complaints about the dungeon. Just how long it took to get here. Well, I wiped on the final boss. Not much of a surprise given I don't have a single piece of human ward, but now would be a pretty good time to go over a drop I got with you guys. This Warrior's Respite chess piece, human ward refreshing and invigorated with pure con, which is a direct copy of, I don't have it on me, the heavy version of this Harbinger chess piece, ward refreshing, invigorated, but it has pure con, the heavy variant. So that's 
A direct copy, which is an S-tier tank chest piece, invigorated is so good for PvE tanking, especially in mutations. Oh, this isn't oh, good. God, what? Oh, wait. Did my internet just die? And yeah, we're getting- Oh! Oh! Two balls fell on him at once! I didn't even know that was possible. No, no, like, one ball hit him, and then another ball fell on his body. He might have it, though. He might have nah, it. Nah, dude, that's- that's hilarious. That's- that's hilarious. No way. In ice resistance area, oh yeah, like, like a mutation or something, yeah. yeah. There's something. Suck. Oh man, I got a leg grow. That's trash. What do you get? Still, I got Imperium Musket Legendary. Imperium Musket, no, no you need. I, I got Lumberjack fans. That's tough. Oh, wait. There's a leg grow has Rogue and Human Bane. I thought it was garbage. What? What is this? What is it? It has Rogue, Human Bane, and... Refreshing move, what? Alright, that one wasn't so bad. Spark powder. I hope that has human bane. I got a blunderbuss. I got a spark powder too. Let's see. Vicious and human bane! Yes, dude! Really? I got a oh. spark powder too. Alright, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. I wonder what the third perk is. What's I have, the third perk? I have What's no that? idea. It's chain fire. That's not the best, but it is a damage perk. Chain fire. Okay. That sucks because we can't put an ice gem in there because of the chain fire. Dang, that kind of sucks, but that's really good. That, that blunderbuss is going to be a ton of fun. 23% extra damage on humans. Okay, so I forgot that with the new expedition comes a brand new heart rune. I forgot all about the heart rune of Firestorm. And when I saw this for the first time on the Season 1 teaser a few weeks ago, it didn't look that good. It kind of just looked like a generic damage heart rune. And in some sense, that's exactly what it is. But it does have a little bit more going on to it than that. Allies inside Firestorm gain 10% in power for 6 seconds, so anyone the tornado hits gets an empower, and also most of the variants, except for the one that I do plan on crafting, inflict a burn 30% heart rune damage per second for 6 seconds, which is pretty decent. I don't know, I'm just looking for a different heart rune right now because when I far cast DPS, I really don't like using detonate. Having to get up close for that detonate damage to go off is not only an inconvenience, but it is also quite dangerous because I do play 5 con most of the time when I'm far cast DPSing. If I can, I don't have the optimal gear right now. Something always has constitution on it stopping me from playing 5 con. But this is the heart rune that I do plan on going for. We need 4 more flame cores just to make the major variant. And I can't even check the brutal version until I craft. Actually, I have the wiki page open. Hold on. Um, you go to crafting recipes. You need... Oh, no way. What the hell? Amazon, what the hell? You need 50 flame cores to take it from major to brutal. Okay, well, we are going to be doing a ton of Empyrean Forge. You know what? They probably want you to get those 50 flame cores by buying the season pass, but I'm sorry. I'm not convinced yet. I need to see regular updates before I drop any money on this game. I won't be buying the season pass. I'll take the free rewards at the top or, you know, whatever free ones I can get. So you do get a ton of flame cores. Like, look at this. Ten flame cores here. Five flame cores here. I'm not sure which ones are locked behind the season pass. Um, but yeah, I do plan on getting all these flame cores, you know, the old-fashioned way, I guess you would say. Even though they just came out by PvEing. So I'm going to hop back into the Empyrean Forge. And we're going to work on getting this heart rune leveled up. And you know, while I wait for my lobby to fill, we really should be rolling some gypsum gear. Because I need human ward gear. And I can't seem to get the craft mod for it. Nor am I getting any really good pieces of Human Ward drop. And I still can't believe they went with Human Ward over Beast Ward. But it is what it is. You can get Human Ward from Gypsum Gear. And I think you can also take it to Legendary now since this update. So we will be having to condense one of our stacks of Gypsum. We have so much Gypsum and it's kind of a fun personal collection I've built up. 149 Sapphire Gypsum. You can only get two of these per day. So this is 174 and a half days of Sapphire Gypsum right here. I mean, seven, not 174, 74 and a half days of Sapphire Gypsum right there. 83 Emerald Gypsum. Okay, we can definitely convert these down. Not a big fan of doing Corrupted Portals, but we do have a pretty gnarly collection. Alright, full set of gear. Let's see what we get. Oh no, blues and greens. No epics. Oh, that's so disappointing. If, if you get an epic, you can take it to legendary since this update, so... Yeah, that sucks to see, but heck, I'd even use a blue if it has human ward on it. No. Absolute garbage. Sad to see. Oh, brother, these are some rough runs. I don't think we got a single flame core from that, did we? Nope, still just the one. I might have to look up a guide on how to get these. But we did land 
a full bis bow. I'll show it to you guys. Check it out. The Empyrean Bow of the Ranger with Corrupted Bane Vicious, Keenly Empowered, and Pure Dexterity. This dropped from one of the mini bosses inside the dungeon. I decided to just show it at the end because it was a very stressful run, but that is a massive pickup. By far the best Corrupted Bane Bow on the account. And it's not close. This is our second best. Oh, we can take that to Legendary. Nice. Oh, Legendary Plane Helm. Too bad it's of the Sage. Legendary Legs. <laughs> okay. And a Legendary Fire Staff. What did they do? I got all blues like the other day. And now, what was that? Four Legendaries? Actually, technically five Legendaries. Once we upgrade these, we'll see. They're not worth upgrading though, are they? Nope. Uh, whoa. Damn it, they're Intelligence though. I'll take them to Legendary. I wish they were Light. Or even medium. God, that would have been so awesome. Wait a second. They lied. Damn them. Oh, I'm still gonna keep it. Whatever. Uh, trash. And, um... I got way better lights than this for ancient content. But let's check out that fire stuff. Sheesh. Oh, it's strength anyway, but... That was almost really nice. Well, I'll be honest. Doing that Empyrean Forge with randoms is kind of miserable until it becomes common knowledge how to do the final boss. Honestly, that boss can take upwards of an hour with the wrong team because not only are people not running Human Ward, they're not running Flame Gems. They're not putting rubies in their gear or have Flame Protection on their amulet. So it can just be a very long and miserable dungeon. So I think what I'm going to do, just because I'm also playing another game on the side, I've gotten back into old school RuneScape while I was waiting for updates on this game. So I'm having a little bit of fun on there. While I do that on the side, I think I'm just going to farm Human Idol Shards, the major trophy component for the Human Bane trophies from Sir Juni the Strategist. Uh, he has a pretty slow spawn. There's actually two spawns for him. And he does also have a small chance of dropping Flame Cores. So I can knock out my Human Bane trophies and passively farm a few Flame Shards here and there, or Flame Cores, whatever they're called, with zero effort, passively. So I think this is the best thing for me to do right now. Definitely beats the Empyrean Forge. It's a great expedition, but until the normies get their gear, <laughs> I'm going to stay far away from it. Oh god, it would seem I'm not the only one who wants to farm this guy. Okay, well I was prepared to solo farm it. I brought healer gear and everything, but I should have known. <laughs> Oh, a flame core from that. No freaking way. That's awesome. Okay, I guess they're going to the second spawn. Let me keep up with the train here. I'm doing AFK stuff on RuneScape, so I can definitely afford to keep up with these guys. All right, well, there's our first human idol shard. Very first kill. I actually didn't get loot for that other one. How am I almost dead? What the hell was hitting me? He must have put down a damage over time or something. But yeah, I believe he also drops the the medium tier trophy component is called the human digit but i believe any varangian can drop that but that would be super nice to passively knock out here as well not sure the chance of a flame core but it's got to be pretty low huh i didn't look at any of his drops i highly doubt this is better than the blunderbuss we got from the imperial forge but we will see we will see refreshing move and plagued crits neither of those are very good on a blundy but we do have a bunch of shards on us, and Lord knows I have no use for them, so let's do science. Chain fire. I want my shards back. There's our first flame core as a drop from this boss, and we have, I believe, 19 human idol shards, was it? Let me see. Human. 19. Okay, so it is about a 5% drop rate. Okay, well, not the best, but we do need a lot of these, like, probably close to 100 for everything to do with the patch. So that's, um, what is that? About 2,000 kills? Okay, back-to-back -back flame cores. Maybe it's higher than a 5% drop rate. That would be a very pleasant surprise, but I think we just got super, super lucky right there. The brains. That's a pretty cool-looking helmet. I hope it's a cool helmet. I got you, Asuna. Everyone else just left. I got you, buddy. Let's see. Dang, Elliot version and crit, right? I mean, if the other perk is resilient, it's decent. It's definitely usable if that's resi. It is refreshing. All right, bye-bye. So I've not been too active on this game for the past week, but I did notice you get a tier five storage chest from the Easter event for this year. The defiled storage chest of the hair or something like that. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's definitely worth going out of my way to get. You do also get a pretty decent skin from the event. Oh, I could have... 
got a collateral there. I believe it's a 1 in 400, or not a 1 in 400, but you're guaranteed to get the chest after 400 kills, and maybe the skin after 200 kills. I didn't look too much into it, but the rewards look decent, so I'll be passively knocking that out while I try to work on some outpost rush crate buildups on the side. We're up to 4 so far. It's um pretty easy to AFK outpost rush. I do admit I'm not the most um constructive player <laughs> i don't really play to win i mostly play to get my crates and play to get a little bit of pvp xp so i do feel bad for the teams that i'm running with but it is what it is and to be fair we can't even run that many because i mean it's been i've been in this queue for an hour and a half let's just put it that way um it's very hard to get out post rush team to go in together i do have hopes this game will bounce back this was a pretty good update but the server is like a wasteland man it's gonna be peak hours here in a few hours and i've been in outpost rush queue for an hour and a half so i guess that just gives me more time to kill rabbits it is what it is we're gonna be ending this episode here though hopefully next episode we'll be starting off with that storage chest actually we probably will it's only 400 rabbits we've had to have killed at least 100 by now you do also get luck things i'm not sure what it's called it's like a lucky rabbit's foot filed rabbit's foot so it's pretty similar to the luck food you get from the thanksgiving event you just don't have to cook it or anything. You can just consume the rabbit's foot as is. Sorry to steal your kills, dude, but it is what it is. Half the player population is located at rabbit farms right now. It's hilarious. But yeah, we're going to be ending this episode here. I'll see you guys in the next one with hopefully that storage chest drop and a good opening of outpost rush caches. I'll try to get at least 10 to start things off. See you guys then.